Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and this is a special episode, and the dinosaur we'll be talking about today is Eustreptospondylus. Now, it's a kind of a hard name to say, isn't it? Uh, but basically, Eustreptospondylus in Greek or Latin means well-curved vertebrae. And when this dinosaur was actually discovered, it was prized because um, the vertebrae were probably, basically the parts of the vertebrae where it actually connects to one vertebrae to the other, it probably was a little bit curved. So that's probably why it was given the name well curved vertebrae. But anyway, it's found in the, in the western part of western parts of Europe. Basically mostly found in in uh, England basically and uh, middle Jurassic, 165 million years. About thirty feet long, probably weigh two tons, and it's a carnivore. And basically, Eustreptospondylus is also famous in the Walking with Dinosaur series in the episode uh, Cruel Sea. And it's the only dinosaur that's actually featured in that episode. And the funny thing is, is that um, when this dinosaur was actually discovered back in the 19th century, uh, scientists didn't really have that great of classification uh, in terms of fossils. So basically what they kind of did is actually they um, they just basically gave it almost the same name uh, all the time. Because you see, when when Megaraptor was, at, or Megasaur, not Megaraptor, um, Megalosaurus was actually discovered, it was actually, they thought that all carnivorous dinosaurs that they are actually going to find are Megalosaurus. And that was, and that was their thought, that was their um, process of actually identifying uh carnivorous dinosaur fossils. But basically it wasn't until um, the next century, the 20th century, uh, when it was a, basically a full hunt, nearly a full hundred years after after this dinosaur was discovered, they actually realized that this is his own genus. So it's actually, so they gave it the name Eustreptospondylus. And now Eustreptospondylus is actually part of the Megalosaurid uh, family tree. It is related. It is kind of closely related to uh, Megalosaurus, and some scientists believe that the, the Megalosaurus probably evolved into the Spinosaurus. But even though there's, I still highly doubt that, because you see, I actually want to see more evidence of that. I want to see how uh, Megalosaurus actually uh, elongated their snouts, actually got their claws bigger, and all that kind of stuff, and also how their how their um, the spines on their vertebrae. Uh, actually got longer too because that's why I like to know and and also since that this is actually a dinosaur that probably lived near the shores uh, it probably actually was probably actually looked for food uh, near the shorelines probably uh, eating up uh, washed up uh, sea turtles probably eating um, some um, washed up uh, maybe uh, parts of uh, marine reptiles, maybe like parts of ichthyosaurs, probably some parts of plesiosaurs. Uh, pliosaurs probably wouldn't actually... Parts of pliosaurs probably might not wash up that much, unless if it's a baby. Uh, and probably uh, pterosaurs. It probably actually fed on pterosaurs as well. And you see, during that time, it was very rare for... Um, it was kind of very rare for uh, this dinosaur to actually probably hunt other dinosaurs, but even though it could actually do that, unless if, that, if, it, if there was actually any other dinosaurs that were around in this in its area. Since it's 165 million years old, there's probably not too much of a fossil record of that time, so it's actually going to be really hard uh, to find out uh, what what kind of um, what kind of ecosystem did it actually live in, you know. And I would actually, and since that uh, Eustreptospondylus, it's only it's most, but basically one skeleton, one kind of skeleton has been found that I'm aware of, is actually in Britain, and um, and I don't remember where it's kept, but it, I've seen uh, pictures of a ju of the juvenile skeleton, uh, but even though it's it's kind of hard for me to d distinguish um, how this dinosaur actually was a full. So I want to see like a full, like a picture of. Um, of the of an adult skeleton of Eustreptospondylus. I want to see what are the, really the differences between Megalosaurus and 
and uh, you strip the spawns. So I'm pretty sure they're almost the same, but even though I like to see like what kind of evolutionary changes are there uh, from one to the other. I'm pretty sure your Streptospondylus is probably nearly the same size or otherwise smaller than Megalosaurus, but even though I like to see a little bit more uh, evidence about this. And so since it was found in the Middle Jurassic, um, there's some dinosaurs that actually have been found in the Middle Jurassic. Uh, Megalosaurus actually came around earlier than that, so it actually kind of came around like, like probably around uh, 100... Uh, 70 million years, if I remember correctly, and and since that it actually came, since that Eustrepsospondylus came after, so probably was a descendant of Meg of Megalosaurus. So it's going to be very interesting on where it falls in in the family tree of of the of the of this kind, and basically its other descendants. You know, where does it go after that? You know, does it really go to the Spinosaurus or does it go to the Abilisaurus? But even though some people believe that the Ceratosaurus evolved into this into the Abilisaurus, but I like to see a little bit more evidence of this. I like to see how the cladistics actually show this, and I like to see some family like to see some evidence of of this. And um, and this is a dinosaur I, I kind of know a little bit about. I mean, I'm. I haven't been following up on it because since it's actually one of those dinosaurs that, you know, you hear it, but then it, you hear about it, but then it's just it, it's just not talked about that much. So it, it's just basically it's one of those dinosaurs that uh, that uh, paleontologists don't really get to study that much because since it's actually uh, a dinosaur that's rarely found, and also it's actually um, in a in a part of the part of the uh, time scale where there's not that much of fossilization, so I like to hopefully get to get to hear more evidence about hear hear more about this. I like to read up on it as much as I can if I could, and also uh, probably and probably for the extinction of this animal, probably couldn't actually adapt to the new type of environment. And then since the new type of environment was actually going to be, it was actually the sea levels was almost were almost ready to rise, and so it was at because around 150 million years uh, ago, you actually had the iconic Jurassic dinosaurs. You know, you had the bigger sauropods like Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, uh, Borosaurus, Apatosaurus, and uh, all those kinds of uh, sauropods. And you have Stegosaurus, and you have uh, some of the other giant predators like Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, possibly Saurophaganax, and Ceratosaurus. And so those were pretty much those newcomers that came in and basically uh, the megalosaurs were basically kind of almost on their last legs basically considering that Torvosaurus was probably one of the last of the megalosaurs so hopefully uh, get to hear more uh, about this considering that that uh, the, sauro the sauropods were getting bigger at that point and also um, probably Streptospondylus couldn't handle uh, be because since if it probably was a specialist, then it probably didn't actually last very long. Because since specialists die out quicker, because since their food supply is going to run out, and they don't want to move, they don't want to, they don't want to move further inland. You know, like like say with uh, Spinos, like with Spinosaurus. You know, since it was a specialist, it probably couldn't leave uh, the areas where it was um, where it was uh, swampy uh, rivers or in pro swampy rivers and lakes or otherwise um possibly um uh, some parts of the shoreline were were flooded or anything like that or otherwise like some of the rivers were dried out or flooded uh that kind of stuff you know i'm pretty sure that it probably suffered the same fate as with the spinosaurus they, they were specialists you know they just couldn't survive without their main food source and that's pretty much how it happens all right, that's it for now. So next week will be an answering questions episode. But even though I will be late, I will actually probably have to do the episode uh, a little bit later uh, than usual, considering that I have a I have a field trip coming. I have a field trip coming up for um, a certain class, and I probably won't be back until until the afternoon. So hopefully, I actually get get a chance to actually you know, get back here in time to actually uh, do this episode. Hopefully by. Uh, five o'clock central time I uh, might be able to get the episode done uh, but anyway if you still have but anyway if you have a question about but anyway for an answer questions episode, 
they'll be answering questions up as well next week. So if you got a question up a question or two about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life, feel free to email me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or the ways you can go on the Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts with Dino Chris, and I like the page and you can also um, Submit your questions on the Facebook page in the comments section. That way I can read them. And also make sure to keep your questions short and to the point. And with an email, please leave your first name and also uh, uh, the city and state or otherwise country of where you're from. That way I can I can know where where it is coming from. And also I'm not I'm not really trying to expose. I'm not really trying to you know get you guys really out there to to know all the to know everybody and to, it's just basically just your first name you know that's all that's all it takes and also you can follow me on twitter at c s g r a l l that's my twitter page like it and you like like uh, follow me on twitter and i post pretty cool stuff on there and also take care of the people around you and also for you younger people out there make sure to listen to your parents your teachers and your guardians those are the best motivation you can have for a good education it's very important to have a good education because with a good education you get a good job in the future all right that's it for now and i'll see you guys next week